Welcome back, gang. It's Delty from Delty's Gaming, and we are doing another dungeon diving series going after this little crazy looking choke thorn statue bust thing. So let's go ahead and crank it on vet using my solo sork. Simple build, hunting's rage, brigands with a loadout of skills for max, max healing. So I'm going to explain to you what I do with this build, how I can solo vet dungeons, and you can see the power of its healing. So a bunch of trash here and the bosses take a while since it is solo and they have about three million hit points each but you're just maintaining your discipline and if you maintain your discipline throughout the fights it's pretty easy to do a lot of these dungeons um you don't have any regions so you have to rely on dark deal that's your your one time where your vulnerable is getting stand back so before i go into combat i do a couple things put hurricane up deadly cloak for aoe damage reduction put my trap beast down hit a rend uh, pointing at the direction of all the enemies that I can get it and I just spin to win. You can see I, my health's not even dipping. I have just have so so much healing. That was over 10,000 healing a second. So that's what the Sork is really good at is it's just pretty pretty forgiving as long as you're maintaining your buffs. So crit surge priority, hurricane, and then deadly cloak. That AoE damage reduction, see that red circle right there? That's going to lower your damage right there, so you're not going to do the instant nuke. So with all those guys beating on me, I'm still allowed to just have so much healing per second that my health just bounces right back up. Also, you can see my stamina. It's pretty low almost all the time, and that's okay. As long as you have enough stamina to break CC if you get stunned, to block, to dodge maybe once, I wouldn't go below that threshold. Usually about 5,000. So once it gets there, as long as my buffs are up and I have some dots, you see like right there, I have some dots, then I do a heavy attack, then I do dark deal, the dots are going to carry me through because of crit surge. And so crit surge is still going to apply to those guys while I'm doing dark deal, so I'm not uh, vulnerable for healing. So you can see when, when crit surge hits, it's 5k healing. I mean, that's incredible. That's one, one ability. So it's absolutely monster. And then we can use Dark Deal. You see my stamina. Boom. Pops right back up. So the Sork is just a freaky powerful class. It has been. And it still really, really is. Very, very easy. Good AoE for uh, these types of applications. Also, you see I put a Trap Beast down. Why to do that? Because it increases all my critical strike damage. So spin to win. It's going to hit five players or, or five characters or whatever you want to call them enemies. Well, guess what? That's going to be five more opportunities to increase my crit. So here's a big pull with a lot of ads. And what I did is I saved up my ultimate absorption field. And so I'm just dinking them here, trying to get their attention, get my AoEs up, and then, boom, put my negate down. So basically just stun locks them. Now one of them is just healing in the corner there. I'm just going to leave it because I can get most of them down. So if you have your deadly cloak up and you have your hurricane up, and you're spinning it's not going to take a whole lot of time to kill all those guys because remember that hurricane that is where it gets nasty once the health is lower so you can see right here boom they're just blowing up and i'm using dark kills to get my stamina back up typically you don't want to be at full uh magic you want to kind of always use your magic to either reapply crit surge or dark deal to top yourself off that's how you would use your magic as best as possible before the boss fight here, I'm just going to beat on this little ugly thing just to get some ultimate up and some resources. Don't forget or undervalue the power of just a fully charged heavy attack and that stamina back. And you're doing damage at the same time. So you don't know what to do? Do a fully charged heavy attack. Nothing wrong with that. Here comes boss. And so we're just going to maintain our discipline and do a couple abilities. So I'm going to kind of explain it and then we're going to fast forward so it doesn't take forever. Essentially what I'm doing is putting uh, my dots up. So... Poison Injection, Endless Hail, Hurricane, and then I kind of run around while he's doing his channel animation attack, which is a big red circle. And that prevents me from just getting one shot. See right there? And so once I have that time, I'm holding block when there's this heavy attack, I'm reapplying my buffs. So always time on target. If you can't do something to the actual boss, just at least reapply your buffs so when the boss is available to attack, guess what? You can attack it, you're not wasting any time. So for solo play, I have to rely on myself for everything. Healing, sustained, uh, damage as well. So it, you know you can see the damage, I'm about what, 20 some, 22 something thousand damage a second, which is not good, but obviously I have to rely on myself to heal and survive. 
that's the main thing. And you can see Deadly Cloak, the reason I like to use it is those big red circles, the AoE cleave, that's going to affect that. So you can see I don't take a whole lot of damage with that. And then also when he does his uh, little attack, I have enough stamina to dodge roll it. So it's very simple mechanics. Now there's a boss back there, but I'm not going to go do it just for the sake of this video. So it doesn't take forever, but there is a boss back there. Build up some old ultimate on Ugly Face here. And uh, always build up ultimate before you go into a fight. I mean, really, you know, PvE or PvP, pretty much this game's about ultimate, right? So if you can start an ultimate on every single boss fight, you're going to have way, way, way easier time than if you just kind of use an alt on random trash packs. Now, Meteor, something like that, you can use it and get it back right away, especially depending on the class that you are. So that's okay to do sometimes, but really save your ultimates if you can for situations like this maybe where there's you know, 10 mobs beating on you or whatever so I'm gonna pull them back here I'm gonna do my little absorption field put my trap beast down reapply my buffs and what I would recommend is have your buffs up before you do your ultimate that way when the actual ultimate is there and they're sitting there laying there instead of wasting time applying your buffs you're actually doing damage so that was a mistake on my part. You can see I'm full magic here, so I should be doing the dark deals. The thing about dark deals, when you're doing them, just make sure the mobs are not heavy attacking you. Because if you're, you're channeling and they heavy attack you, you're gonna get nuked doing that. So that's the only thing to really make sure that you do. And also it's a second channel, you can block cancel it. So if you're channeling and you're about to get heavy attacking, it'll, it'll cause a death, block, and then do a dodge or something else. But you can block cancel it. So we got Ugly Face here again. Gonna get some ultimate up on him. And then we got another Ugly Face and Crazy Butt down here. So we got all sorts of fun little mobs to kill. Man, Elder Scrolls, they got the best enemies. Crazy Butt, come here. Corner KL, let's get some ultimate up. So this next box is an annoying piece of crap, but we gotta do it to get the boss, uh, the bust. We gotta get the boss to get the bust. Come on, we want those busts in our house. They look cool, right? And if we don't have any friends like me, you gotta solo these things. So you just gotta do it. All right, so let's get this idiot down. Come on, blood thirst for the win. Now this boss takes some time. Basically, what it's gonna do is pull you in, stun you. So it's gonna drain a lot of your stamina, and it's gonna summon a mob that heals it. So the trick is you can interrupt that mob and then kind of get in between the boss and the mob and like. AOE spin to win. So you see it right there? That that cleave won't necessarily kill us if all of our buffs are up, but it, it'll be enough to do damage to us. So you kind of get in between them, and you kill them. And you do this, and the longer it's there to heal, the worse it's going to be. So you need to actually really boogie to that little ugly mob thing that it poops out, and then you kill it. So you pooper, bash, spin to win, trap beast gets them, game over. Now, the resource sustain is going to be hard on this fight, so because he's pulling you in, and that's going to cause a break free right here, and that drains our stamina. So you're going to have to be really cognizant as we crank up the speed here and your stamina. Two things you can do. If you're low on magic, make sure crit surge is up or you have about 10-15 seconds left on the buff. Um, if not, just do heavy attacks, fully charged heavy attacks. I'm telling you right now, while you're moving in between things, like right here, I'm going to go back to this boss. So if I don't have to cast buffs, I'm just going to fully charge heavy attack while I'm closing the distance. So I'm doing damage and I'm getting resources back. It's not just one or the other. So constantly time on target. You see I'm out of juice. He's stunning me. Okay, now I got some back up. You're also going to use potions on cooldown as well. So every 45 seconds so you can get that stamina up. But it's a really hard sustained fight because you're constantly getting stunned. Make sure you have at least one damage over time effect on the boss at all times. So, poison injection is probably the best one. It's range, you can you have decent duration, endless hail. Both those things on there with hurricane proc him. So that way when you're stunned, you can't break free. Well, you at least have some heals from crit surge. So that is your best bet to get this done. But you can see, as long as I'm maintaining my discipline, this fight takes a while and it's annoying. But I'm never really in threat of dying. I mean, even if I run out of stamina, as long as crit surge is up and poison injection, I'm a stam slurk, and it's, it's, it's gonna be okay. So this is the power of the stam slurk, is that if you just do a basic couple of abilities, you are very, very tanky.
But let's not celebrate just yet, people. We got Ugly Butt again, and we got Crazy Face down there, so we got a bunch of whole little crazy mobs. And then we got the boss with like 5 million hit points that takes half of this dang video. Yeah, I'm super excited to do it, but I'm going to teach y'all how to stay disciplined. Okay, so I got three crazy butts down here, because I'm like, well, let's just try to speed this up a little bit. So I put my absorption field down. Don't put your absorption field down and just walk out of it. You know what I mean? Like, the same thing with tanks. If you're tanking this stuff, put it down, stay in it for this duration. That's why you casted it. I'm going to run away, because I'm scared. Da -da -da. Dark deal once. You see how it heavy attacked? And I block canceled it. So when that guy was heavy attacking, it's better to stay alive than, you know, risk getting a little bit of stamina back. So right there, I didn't have any crits up because I'm not using dots effectively. So make sure, see, I know that. Oh, I don't have any dots up. Stupid stick. Let's kill these guys, get some dots up. Crit surge is up. Now I'm not going to be in trouble like I was before. See? A little Delta makes mistakes all the time. You just got to admit it and just work on it. It's no big deal. And so we go in here. Come on. What are you doing, Delta? Don't pause. I must have got a drink of Mountain Drew. Come on. Let's get these guys. Show them, show them this damn sword AoE. Put this down. We got little casters. So usually when I drag crap, I drag crap to the casters, right? Because they're going to stay still. Melee, they're going to follow you. So drag stuff to where like the most casters are, and then blow them up here. So here we go. We got them all down. And you see this time, what did I do? I didn't have my buffs up. Again, have your buffs up. Have some stamina. So when you drop that absorption field... You're spending most of the time doing spin to win. So your trap beast is down, your hurricane's down, your deadly cloak. So we got we got a pimp delty as build here. Come on, man, get your step your game up. We got him though. See, there's always things to improve on too, people. I mean, I don't play that much anymore just because I don't have a whole lot of time trying to get back into shape. So uh, my skill has definitely diminished a lot, and that's okay. It's just the thing is like you get good at life and what you do right and if people will sit and play this game for 12 hours a day yeah they're gonna be really good at the game because they sit and play 12 hours a day so you have to ask yourself that if you're watching these videos or watching some other content creators you know a lot of them are really good and they're really good players a lot of it is because they just play a lot so yeah you know if you don't have the time to play a lot and get really good that's okay just try to pick up the things that you can do reliably. So, if you pick up a build and it has eight buffs that you have to maintain and you play it once a week, you're probably not going to be that effective at the, the build. Pick a build that is easier to play and more reliable and more effective. Then, then it's much easier for you to actually maintain what you're supposed to do instead of just something that... You, you can't even even dream of doing it. So like a stam DK, you know, they're they're hard to play, especially if you've got Maelstrom daggers. So lecture time, Deltia, while we're killing a boss ugly face, is just make the build work for you. If it's too complicated and you can't pull it off, don't. Do something simplistic. So like this is much simpler, and it's very effective because you just have so much healing. So for people that don't have a lot of friends, want to solo, they want to do this or they want to do that, pick this up. And if you start getting better at it and you start wanting to do dungeons and trials and that sort of thing, have a good team, change the build to be more complex, more damage rewarding. And remember, this is set up for solo. So when you're doing group dungeons, you can sacrifice some things to get more damage, like Dark Deal. If I got someone throwing spears and shards for me, I don't really need that sustained, you know, repentances and so forth. So I can swap that out, put my summoning skill back on, get more stamina, now I'm doing more damage. So these these little tips you gotta understand, that's you know, that's that's what it is. I mean, the best players in the world at anything, whether it be golf or video games, is play a lot. There, there's no secret. So make the build work for you, not just pick up a build and say automatically it's gonna work. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. You know, it's got to find that balance between I can execute these buffs reliably, um, these debuffs, I can heal myself and survive, and it works for me. All right, lecture time. Shut up, Deltia. It's over. Let's go to the final boss. I'm not going to pick up the scroll because I don't want this video to take 45 minutes of half of it, me beating on this stupid boss. So I'm going to show you what I do, and I'm going to speed it up really fast so it's not uh, you know, a two-hour video. 
Basically, this boss is very easy. The boss will summon um, a pool of like four or five, you know, pretty squishy undead in danger where you're at at the time, at certain uh, time intervals. Um, so, like you see right here. So, that, that's good because when we're in melee range, as soon as they summon, if we have Endless Hail, Deadly Cloak, Hurricane up, we're doing our spin to win, we just melt them. Now, all these kills are Undead and Daedra is going to give us ultimate. So, it's actually a really easy fight because we have so much ultimate. We have so much healing. So, the downside is they do that little red AoE and we have to get out of there. But Rend is your friend. People ask me, why do you use Rend? Why don't you use Rend? It outperforms any other DPS ultimate that you can use. Don't believe me? Go test it. It does. By far. So, and the healing. This is staggering. So, you can have your stun with Dawnbreaker. I'll have my healing. Um, and then, another thing is you have to use Vigor a couple times because they put this dot on you. You see that poison dot? When that thing's up, it is pretty hard to recover from it. So, during that time, you're going to want to use Vigorous. You're going to want to obviously maintain your buffs, crit surge, the poison injection or something. Um, but use a Vigor here and there so your health doesn't dip down so low. The more mobs are around, the easier it is for those crit surges to go off. So it's going to be more reliable. But it's, uh, it starts when they get really, really low, and it's only you and the mob. Then it's a little bit harder. And so when you have to go back and, uh, out of the red AoE circle, that's when you apply your buffs. So like when she does a little red AoE, you'll notice I'm doing dark deals that time. I'm reapplying crit surge. I'm uh, getting deadly cloak up. And you can see I got hit pretty hard there, but I just did a dodge roll. Dark Deal, Recover. So I'm using Dark Deal combined with potions to get my resources back. Constantly using Rend, uh, and then also those AoE mobs. Remember that Rend, the ultimate dual wield, is in front of you. So you can hit more than one mob with it and just get more than one healing as well. So once those mobs pop up, if I have a Rend up, I'm trying to position myself so I hit the boss and the mobs. And then I just focus on the boss, because I know those mobs will die. They'll, have, they'll pose no threat to me with Rend uh, up. So, it's a very easy fight. You just have to maintain your discipline and your buffs. Now, console folks, you don't have buff timers yet. So, if you ever get those, that'd be great. You really have to pay attention to your actual character's appearance. And the hands of purple. That's, that's the crit surge. Also, if you turn your... Um, your, your text on that shows like damage and healing, that's a good reminder for you that you don't have crit surge up or you do if you're not paying attention to the actual hands glowing purple. Um, so that's what I do on consoles is when I'm playing, it's really more about not the little buff timers, obviously you don't have that, but the parents of the character. And after a while, you start getting into a rhythm of when things are up and when things aren't. You know, if your health isn't bouncing back up right away, Okay, Chris Surge probably isn't up. If you don't see that big, huge circle hurricane, Deadly Cloak doesn't have the little swords on it in front of you. Okay, that's how you start recognizing on consoles if these buffs are up or not. So it just takes a little more time, and hopefully that will come out for consoles because you all know I play on consoles now, and I, and I love it. I actually really do. And so that's the that's the build. That's the video. Um, we didn't get the no death run because I didn't kill that boss on the side, but I still got the bus. So, yay, I can go put it in my house and celebrate how cool I am. So thanks for watching. Hope you like this build. Get you through a dungeon or a VMA. And leave me some feedback if it works for you. Thanks for watching.